Hey friends, welcome back. Time for another identity and access management lesson. You know, I was thinking a little bit about one of the things that I do a lot as a parent, which is kind of regulating some of the workings and the happenings within the house. Often it kind of goes like this. When you're done A, you can do B. <laughs> Once you've finished your dinner, then you can have a treat. And uh, we call that conditionality. We're basically creating if-then logic. When this condition is true, this effect can be had. And within Identity and Access Management at AWS, they use conditionality to drive a lot of the most powerful security policies that you'll see in effect. Keeping in mind that conditionality allows policies to be dynamic, and contextual. They're actually understanding what's happening in the uh, moment when the permission call is made and then making an intelligent determination beyond that. Very powerful stuff. And we can leverage this in our user identity-based permissions and in our resource-based permissions. Now, AWS throws one other fancy term at this. They call it uh, attribute-based access control. <laughs> and the basic principle is that a user an identity like a role or a group or another AWS service or the resources that we're building like VPC, subnet, security group rules, routing tables, etc. They all have attributes that we could look at to determine whether or not a certain permission should be allowed. So to kind of get started on it, I encourage you to take a look online, AWS, IAM, and then abbreviate ax, uh, attribute based access control, ABAC. And in the results, you should be able to find a link for what is attribute based access control. And there, and you can kind of see AWS laying it out and pointing out that identities like users, groups, and roles and systems can have attributes. And then the resources can have attributes as well. Here they're kind of showing these little color-coded relationships. The basic principle would be, if you're a user that has a certain tag or is coming from a certain area, then we might allow you to work with resources that also have those same corresponding tags. Now in the background, the condition operator within identity and access management policy statements is really the part that drives this uh, all the way through. That's the part that provides the actual logic that says, what attribute we're looking at, what values we're going to allow, and then ultimately whether that's going to be an allow an action or whether that's going to be used to deny an action. And so in the end, friends, we're going to be spending a lot more time over the next couple of uh, identity and access management lessons looking at some of my very favorite conditions. And to kind of help prime you for that, again, go back to Google. And this time you want to take a look for AWS IAM policy conditions. And that should get you a chance to get into this one here. Yeah, the, the JavaScript object policy elements. And if we take a look at the conditions there, they kind of go over how to format them and write them into the policies. And there's also a section on here where they talk about the operators that we can work with. So string matching, number matching, date and time, you can see Boolean, binary, IP address is a very powerful one. We can even check to see whether or not a certain attribute is there or not there. Um, and then what we should do depending on what we find inside of them. So in the end, friends, working with attribute-based access control policies is one of the great tools within AWS. And at the heart of it is using conditionality and condition operators to evaluate what we're looking for and what sort of effect that should have, allow or deny. So make sure you check out the rest of my identity and access management one minute lessons, and I'll see you there.